that uh, presentation. Hi, everybody. So I'm Angela Gannon. I'm the campus security chief. Um, if you haven't met me, I'm here in Laulima building, first floor on the corner outside of the building. Just come on by. I'm happy to talk to you. Bring your mask. I've got mine and we can have we can talk story anytime. And along with me is Shauna. Hi everyone, I'm Shauna Pabingwit, the Instagram Title Nine Coordinator and EEO Officer. And I'm located right next to the Dean's office in Polina Building, right next to the old um, student lounge area on the first floor. Welcome. All right, so our course objectives today um, is uh, seven points. So understanding the purpose of the Clery Act, um, understanding how it impacts us here at UH Maui College, um, identifying who's responsible for gathering and publishing the data, uh, knowing what crimes, uh, understanding your role as a CSA, and knowing what steps to take in reporting. So our campus security staff here at UH Maui College consists of myself as the chief, I have two sergeants, I have five security officers, um, and I currently have two uh, temporary emergency hires that can only do 19 hours a week to fill behind. And I have two um, contract guards that assist as well. So we have three shifts, 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, and our primary uh, responsibility is for your, for our campus's um, security and safety. And we're committed to providing and promoting a safe and secure campus, um, serving everybody with Aloha. So this photo here is a picture of Jean Cleary. In 1986, she was actually raped and killed in her campus dorm. And as a result, her parents believed that the university failed to share vital information with its students regarding campus safety. And so their e efforts ultimately resulted in the passage of the Clery Act, which is a federal law requiring all universities and colleges receiving federal student financial aid programs to report these types of crime statistics. And so we have, and this is a new quoted um, rate for violations. So we had in 2017, Baylor University in Texas was fined a little over $460,000 for violations of the Clery Act. And so, yeah, we definitely don't wanna reach that, that limit. So, <laughs> so any institution um, that violates the Clery Act may face a warning at first, but yeah, per violation can, this is the 2021 rate right now. So up a little over 59,000. So we do wanna make sure that, you know, we stay in compliance for UH Maui College. And we, like, this is the first step, having all of you folks attend here today. And then through word of mouth, hopefully we can get, you know, create awareness showing that this is, important for us to follow through with this. So what are the requirements of the Jean Cleary Act? So um, first of all, uh, security department has a responsibility to keep a crime log. And you can find our crime log uh, is currently on the UH Maui College website under um, security, it's, it's a crime log. Um, we also publish an annual security report and it's due October 1st, so that's, that's a requirement. Um, I'm also required to provide timely warnings uh, should an incident occur, um, uh, maybe a motor vehicle theft, um, a fire, uh, burglary. Um, I'm required to provide the campus a timely warning if there's a threat to students or employees. Um, between Shauna and I, we have to make sure that the basic rights for victims of sex assault, dating, domestic violence, and stalking are provided. Um, and also we do our uh, emergency exercise plan, uh, actually response and evacuation. And so 
I tried to plan hours in January, February, um, and I, I encourage everybody to sign up and participate, even if it's just a volunteer or a bystander, um, just to witness and experience um, what events take place in an emergency. So what is the impact on the university and you? Uh, so sometimes there's a lot of crimes or incidents that happen and they're not reported to the police. You know, um, folks have the option of um, not reporting. Um, however, if, I mean, not reporting it to the police. However, if it's a crime that's reported to a CSA, we are obligated to have that down as a statistic. So that statistic we're required to report. So we're required to gather the information and I have to publish the data in my annual uh, uh, security report. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, later. Okay, so what makes you a campus security authority or CSA? So this is the definition according to the Clery Act. So CSAs are officials with significant responsibility for student and campus activities. So um, these are the list of personnel here on campus that are required uh, mandated reporters under the Clery Act. So although if you don't see your um, position title listed here, we highly recommend that you still do your due diligence and um, become an active bystander and report any crime statistics to either Angela or myself just to make sure that we are you know taking this seriously and to the best of our ability um, reporting the correct statistics okay and so this the reason why Angela and I kind of um, collaborated for this is because a lot of it is related to Title IX, where you know stalking and sexual violence and harassment come into play, too. And so, in addition to being a CSA, everyone here um, may also be a responsible employee. So, as a responsible employee, that includes any faculty members, lecturers, university managerials, and um, executive employees and also campus security and HR. And so those are required uh, reporters as responsible employees. However, um, you know, in, the, in case a student does come to you, a student or employee does come to you under Title IX, you do have an obligation to report certain um, incidents that occur on campus. So the main thing I wanna, um, portrays that we cannot promise any conf confidentiality to. So in, in case a student or employee comes to you and wants to tell you something personal of a personal nature, you can say something kind of like, oh, before we go any further, please know that I'm a responsible employee and only confidential resources, such as a personal support counselor on campus may maintain this confidentiality. Do you feel comfortable moving further or I can refer you over to a personal support counselor? So something amongst those um, lines there. And as far as um, having this type of incident reported to, there's deadlines. As far as Title IX, it has to be reported within three days to the Title IX coordinator. Too. So there are different regulations that we do have to follow. So a CSA's responsibility to, to report a crime. So you all have the responsibility to inform the individual, like Shauna just said, uh, that it's your obligation as a CSA under the Clery Act to be a reporter. And just like the video said, you know, it's to it's for their safety, it's to get them help and support, it's for the campus's safety. And should a situation arise where they're telling you something that possibly needs to, I need to send out a timely warning, you know, uh, a perpetrator's on campus, somebody's just been assaulted, um, we've got to keep others safe as well. So 
um, whenever a crime is reported, it needs to be brought. So Shauna said her deadline is three days. For any Cleary crime, it's immediate. And so timely, timeliness is important. I can't hear, uh, if somebody reports it to you today, uh, I shouldn't be hearing about it in three months because um, that's where the responsible employee piece comes into play. Um, so it's, it's, it's important that we get the information and we can move on it. Uh, when in doubt, um, just uh, report it. Uh, confidential reporting options. So we encourage um, the use of our personal support counselors. We have Mari and we have Eris, and I think Shane is uh, substituting right now for Eris. But um, the confidential reporting process um, is where we refer that student or that person reporting to you. You gather as much information as you can, and, but you, you get them in contact, whether if by phone number, by email, um, and, and calling them and letting them know and getting them connected because that personal support counselor will be the one to discuss the crime or discuss the incident with that person reporting and um, we can move forward from there. Hey Angela, this is Shane. Just to clarify right now, it's just Mari. Yeah, I'm filling in for errors for disabilities, oh. but personal support would be just Mari for now. Okay, thanks, Shane. thanks for that clarification. And also I'll go over some other resources later on at the end of this presentation too, where we have all other um, confidential advocates too on campus. And so um, if you stay for the end, I'll, I'll go over that shortly. But um, as far as scenario one, a UHMC program coordinator who has been identified as the CSA is told by a student that they have been raped and is seeking emotional and medical support. So a lot of times it's like, okay, what do I do? And the program coordinator should actually document the information as a crime report. And it should be reported regardless of whether the victim chooses to file a report or not. And so we would have to um, continue. Like we, we have to see if they would want to report their name, of course, but yeah, um, Angela will go over. Okay. Anonymous reporting. <laughs> yeah, I'll go over that later. Okay. Scenario two, we have a student mentions that, to her boyfriend that a number of cars were stolen from the campus parking lot during the previous night. Later that day, her boyfriend tells the dean of students what he heard. And as a result, the dean should ask which parking lot it was and what, if anything else, the boyfriend knows about the incident. So this is just so that the dean can document any information and then report it to Angela or the campus security department in a timely manner or immediately, as she said. Please, thank you. Scenario three, so Ms. Jones, academic counselor at our school gets a call from a director of a counseling center in town. The caller wants to let Ms. Jones know that four students from our school sought assistance at the center and told the center's counselors that they had been sexually assaulted on campus and were not seeking emotional support. They did not request for a police investigation. So what does Ms. Jones do? So this is a third party report and Ms. Jones having no reason to believe that this, that this wasn't made in good faith uh, has to document all the information she's given and needs to forward the report to campus security. So, um, and we'll take it from there. Scenario four, a student tells you she was raped by another student at her off-campus apartment. This isn't student housing, this is at her own personal apartment. What do you do? And this has to do with geography, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But although the crime didn't occur at a location covered by Cleary, we're going to cover that, um, the accused student may, may be subject uh, to institutional disciplinary action for their off-campus conduct. So also the victim uh, is eligible for assistance. And so we are going to 
tell the student about the reporting options. And we also need to refer them to help, you know, campus victim assistance programs, uh, medical treatments, uh, counseling services, um, and also a campus crime management team for assistance. Okay, so all of you who are wondering, am I a CSA or not? By um, the Clary definition, these um, this list doesn't isn't um, required to report crime statistics as a CSA. So this includes clerical staff, which may be um, civil service staff and campus physicians or nurses who work in the health center and personal support counselors. But again, we do highly encourage those to um, report crime statistics to us. Although you may not be required to, we highly encourage it. And if you're worried about being a CSA, this is what you're not responsible for. <laughs> so you don't, you're not the person who has to determine if, if a crime actually took place. All you want to do is document, document, document. So get all the information you can. And then, you know, that's what we have uh, law enforcement for too, is to get all the, the facts. And if an uh, investigation takes place, then that um, then so be it will, you know, we'll conduct the investigation on campus. But yeah, your your responsibility is not to determine if a crime took place on campus or off campus. And a CSA should not try to apprehend the perpetrator. So even if we encourage you to be an active bystander, if they have a weapon or, you know, it's a hostile environment, please do not try and approach them. You can all just always call campus security or 911. And it's also not a CSA's responsibility to try and convince the victim to contact law enforcement. You know, you wanna be able to empower the victim and they have the right to choose whether or not they want to report this. And last but not least, do not delay at all in reporting this information to Angela or myself as we do have to get the reports done in a timely manner so that we do get the information out to the rest of the campus and promote um, campus safety. So what are the Clery Act crimes um, that we're talking about that need to both be reported? So there's four different categories. Um, we have our primary crimes, uh, we have violations and arrests, we have VAWA crimes and hate crimes. So some of the primary crimes that Clery were were required to report in Cleary um, are, of course, murder, manslaughter, sex assault, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, motor vehicle theft, and arson. Um, what are some of the violations and arrests is like a liquor or a drug or a weapon violation law, a uh, law violation or arrest. Um, what are some of the VAWA crimes? It's domestic violence, uh, dating, violence, stalking, um, and then we have a special site for just, just for hate crimes. Um, if you think about it, the Cleary Act, what it does is it allows a parent uh, in the mainland maybe to look at our campus and to look at our, our crime statistics and to see, well, you know, should I be sending my daughter or my son to that school? Um, what is the crime rate like in their geography around their borders? Uh, do they have a lot of murders? Um, do they have a lot of domestic violence, crimes, and so forth? So that's that's kind of where this all pans out. So a hate crime is any of the previous um, crimes I listed above, but it has a the perpetrator's bias is with race, gender, gender identity, your religion, sexual orientation, ethnicity, disabilities, natural origin. So if it was graffiti, regular graffiti, it would be criminal property damage. But if it was graffiti that um, named names and associated that name with, you know, their sexual orientation, it, it will become a hate crime. Okay, so very important. Who do you contact to report these crimes? For an emergency or immediate threat, always contact 911 and 
you want to make sure to follow up with your campus security department always just so that they're properly informed too and aware of what's going on if they see blue lights coming their way like they're gonna panic and you know if it's not a safe um, environment that they should be entering to just for example if there was a someone with a gun it may not be safe for them to approach the scene too so if you are able to contact campus security we ask that you do that um, immediately after contacting 911 and I'll, I'll give you folks the contact information for their mobile number as well at the end of this presentation but for non-emergency situations you can contact your campus security department and this is their extension 255 is the number to remember again 255 and also if you know you need anything to the clery coordinator is angela as the security chief you can call her at extension 576 and if you do need to get a hold of anyone i'm not sure if all of you are aware that we do have a campus crisis management team so they're in charge of sending out all those like notifications that you folks receive to on like alerts through email and on your phone so making sure that you know that notifications get out there whether or not it's safe to report to campus or be on campus so this is a list of who is currently on the team and then when to report it so like Angela said earlier, timing is critical and we want to make sure that it's reported immediately. So you want to be sure to document when the crime or incident occurred and when it was reported to you. So for the law, it's um, it can get confusing because you have to indicate when the crime was actually reported to you. So say it happened in 2020, but it wasn't reported to you until 2021. You want to make sure to notate that too. Just for the crime statistics, we have to make sure that we're um, indicating it correctly in our um, in our annual security report. And so also as a um, after you report it to Angela, you want to make sure that you know, your job is to get the date, time, location, any type of information you are able to obtain. So any witnesses, if any, or persons involved, such as a complainant and a respondent involved in the allegation. And also the nature of the incident too, we wanna make sure we get as much um, detailed information on, on this category as possible, just so we can properly identify what type of crime was committed. And make sure to use the campus reporting form. So Angela sent it out in Maui announcements earlier this morning too, but if you're not already aware, become familiar with this form because in the event that it does happen, we wanna try and be proactive and this is the type of information that we will require. And again, ask the victim if they want to be identified or if they wanna remain anonymous. So how to document and report the facts. So the campus crime report I sent out um, is, it's form fillable. So it's it's an easy form to complete. Just answer the questions on the form. If you have any questions while filling out the form, just give me a call. You, you don't have to be the expert. Um, you don't have to be a criminal lawyer. Um, just indicate the crime that seems most likely um, the more information you can get, the better for us. Um, we just want to help. Uh, we want to support, uh, and we want to um, uh, unload the burden from you as well. So, um, if the person is uh, reluctant to to report to the police, um, you know, inform them that you're obligated to report it, but you will report it anonymously. Um, and you may have to wait if they're really sensitive until they leave your office or classroom before you um, make want to make a phone call uh, as well. So just just to be sensitive, because like the video said, it takes a lot of courage to um, to report um, to uh, come come forward to seek help and. And just the fact that they trust you enough to come forward and and speak to you, you know, we want to honor uh, that as well. 
So what happens after a report is made? So um, I compile all the statistics, um, besides the fact that if it's a, a, an immediate den danger, you know, I'll issue a timely warning. But in general, all of the statistics are gathered. Um, I put them into my annual security report. It's, it's anonymous, there's no names on it, just, just numbers. Um, you know, of course we ask that the crime victims or we help them look towards um, solutions or support, counseling, uh, wellness. Um, and, you know, if anything, we could do this in memory of Jean um, for the plaque that says, lest we forget the meaning of her death, that we must protect one another, you know, so that her, her life will not have been in vain. So um, she died, there was nothing done, and we're, the Jean Clary Act is part of us being in memory of her death to, to make it a better place. Um, for each other and for, for our students. And so we're going back to where did it occur? So the ge geographic location is important. So we wanna see, did this actually happen on campus or was it a non-campus building or property? Or was it actually one of our outreach centers in um, Molokai or Anai? And you know, we just have to make sure if it was on public property, adjacent to the campus too is this reportable or is it not and so on the next slide we'll show you so this is the basic map of our campus and if you're not already familiar where all the buildings are on campus i highly suggest you can join our walking why in the morning and we can go around the whole campus but you know become become familiar with your campus surroundings and what actually is on our campus, such as like Maui Fitz, or we have Angela and Laulima, at the, and she has um, over on the opposite side of campus, we have her security department office too. So just being aware of where you are on campus and where safe places are on campus. So any building or property is um, that's owned or controlled by UH, Maui College. So this also includes like streets, grounds, and parking lots located with, within UHMC. But as far as off-campus incidents, so we have this little um, diagram here that you, or flow chart that you can look at to determine whether or not, you know, is this a space used by students, yes or no? And then so you can continue on and, and determine whether or not this space is reportable or not. For example, if your your class does field trips to play local often, or Upward Bound uh, utilized Maui Beach for their summer program. So what happens at the end of the year is I request statistics from the Maui Police Department according to geographical locations, and I'll give them an address and I'll give them the specific dates. For example, you know Maui Beach from from this date to this date in the summer months, and they'll give me um, any crimes that happened during those days because the fact that it is an off-campus location that our students are at, I have to report that on Clery. So that's just the concept behind the off-campus, not our property uh, situation. So the CSA annual crime report, um, it's due October 1st. Um, what is it what is it for so it's for again for me to disclose my statistics um i ask all of you to fill out the annual form i sent that out on maui announcements um i need all of you just to complete the form even if you've had nobody you know even if it's none just send me the form so i can check off by your name um and hopefully we can we'll have another training um, to get everybody and we'll go over the forms themselves, especially the incident form. Um, but basically the annual reporting form is just an overall form that says whether or not you meet any incident crimes. Um, so, uh, and it's used to verify and I take the MPD statistics and I take our statistics and I, I match everything as well. And some other questions that you can ask yourself. So 
you know, is this a violent crime in progress? So again, we highly recommend that you contact 911 immediately and follow up with campus security. The main thing to consider is that you wanna ensure the safety of your environment, not only for yourself, but others around you too. And it's important to remain calm in the situate, these types of situations, although unexpected, remember to breathe as they said in the video earlier. And when a student or another employee comes to you with their concerns, you wanna make sure that you listen um, supportively and without judgment. And you want to make sure that you actually respond to. So if someone's emailing you this information, make sure you respond and don't leave them hanging. And so um, the next is, has the victim sought or is the victim in need of assistance and services too? So um, don't feel obligated that you have to provide them all the different contact information. But I'd be happy to either me or Angela, if you refer them over to us, we can get them to the appropriate departments um, necessary, or even if one of our community partners can assist too, we can um, gear the, lead them in the right direction for that. And then again, what happened, how, when, where, and is there a suspect that um, can be identified and is there any witnesses? So it's important again to document and get as much detailed information from the student as possible. And has the incident been reported to police or another CSA? It's um, good to follow up as soon as we ask that you report it immediately too, because if this person did report it to multiple faculty members on campus, then you know if everyone is aware of what's going on, we wanna make sure that we're consistent and on the same page and providing the right information to these individuals. And last but not least, does the victim, again, wish to remain anonymous? So that's critical. You want to make sure that they remain in power and in control of what they want to report to. So we can, if they don't want their name included on the report, then we can uh, take that off. And then we have our resources. So we divided it up on-campus resources and off-campus resources, and also, also the national resources numbers that are available 24-7. As we know, we're not all, um, you know, we're university employees, but we're not expected to be working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? So we have these other national resources that can assist in these times of need too, but um, this is where I included the cell phone number so you can go ahead and text too, if it's not safe to call, you can go ahead and um, text that number as well. And here's some the confidential support counselors. So um, we have Aris and Mari, and we also have Cole Sasaoka. She's with Child and Family Services on Maui, and she's actually on campus three days a week. And so she's uh, readily available to, she can as assist you or the student with getting them in touch with community resources. And then this is my number here, if you have any questions and some of the main um, off campus resources, I do wanna point out, they have the employee assistance of the Pacific. They provide um, services to employees. So yeah, once you see uh, emails from HR that they'll send out, um, you know, it doesn't have to be, where you experienced it, if if you know of a colleague or coworker who could utilize these services too, then um, feel free to pass on this information to them. And then with the whole pandemic happening too, it's it's great that we were offered this chance to have um, free telehealth counseling services too. So this is the um, the phone number for that. And oh yes, thank you, Kathleen, for bringing up. But we also do have a confidential resource at the UHMC Health Center is Jennifer Baumstark. Before we send out the slides, I'll include her contact information there as well, but she is also a confidential resource. So while, although she's not a CSA herself, she's um, someone the students or employees can go to for support. So, um... I wanted to uh, check on any questions and I, I did get a, a question. Um, it was in regards to the, the form. So the form 
um, I sent out um, this morning. So this is our crime reporting form. It's form fillable. Um, it's only one page, but if you, you have additional information, just attach it. Um, I'm pretty sure that the field, if you type, it extends the page. It doesn't just keep it in the small block. I'll, I'll have to double, triple check it again. But um, so this is, this is the generic form. Each campus uses this form. Um, and so this is the annual reporting form. So I'll need this form completed by every single CSA by September 15th of this year uh, in order to compile all of my statistics for October 1st annual security report. So please don't be late. Um, we have a list of all of our CSAs for the campus. And as the forms come in, I kind of check, check you off the list. But um, this form is also form fillable. I sent both forms out. If you have any questions about the forms, need more information, I'm happy to help. Uh, Sean and I are happy to do individual Zooms. And um, as I said earlier, uh, we are going to um, do another training uh, in the near future as well for anybody that might have missed it, especially since um, we couldn't record the video, but we'd like to include the video in, in our next training. But do we have any questions? Don't hesitate to ask. Angela, can you, so um, under, Mon Monica is asking, under what name did you mail it out? Because she didn't oh, see it in her inbox. I sent it to Maui Announcements. So if, uh, everybody should be in Maui Announcements. Um, it's a critical tool the campus uses. Um, if you need assistance with signing up, I'm Pretty sure uh, the academic side of the house sent out in your book, your booklet of how to's um, and encourages everybody to sign up for Maui announcements. Um, did you, do you have Maui announcements and you didn't receive it? Oh, she got it. Okay, great. Anybody else have questions? Anybody else have a situation where they had a student and um, they felt awkward um, and had to receive information or was a support person for that student um, and um, didn't know what to do? Maybe now you know what to do or maybe you still don't know what to do. Any comments on that? Angela, yeah, I, I, I'll show my, um, can I show my screen real quick? I'll, I'll just yeah. briefly show them the, where is it? Okay, so I'm still um, working on this, but I'm hoping to get this out to you folks shortly. So it's just a quick action guide to, um, you know, what happens or who do you call when a student is, if there's an emergency or needs support. And then it kind of goes over different, um, you know, tools for you on um, like resources and confidential resources here and um, important reminders. And on the second page of this brochure too, it, it'll have um, the specific situations that you can handle. Like, is it a green, green light? Like, okay, I can assist the student or, do I immediately just stop and call 911? So it'll have different scenarios there for you. And again, it'll go over what is Title IX, your confidentiality reminder that you cannot promise confidentiality in these types of settings. But if they would like to, they can go speak with a confidential resource on campus. And yeah, that's, um, I'm hoping to get this out um, shortly to you folks, but there, there may be times where, when you know, like, what, what do I do? Because you don't want to stop a student from speaking to like first impressions mean everything when the student is ready to talk. Sometimes it's like, it just comes out and they have no one else to go to. So I, I would hate for them to feel like they 
can't speak to you about anything, but you just want to make sure that they are aware of their rights. So if they, if you tell them that you are a responsible employee or a CSA, and they still continue to talk to you about their um, circumstances, then um, by all means, just be there to support them throughout the process. And then either Angela and I can um, assist too with getting them additional resources. I just wanted to let everybody know too is um, this year will be an audit year for Cleary. So I was informed by our system office that um, our campus will be audited. Part of Cleary is not only the annual security report, but also things like our campus emergency response plan. So um, be on the lookout um, for, I'm gonna offer some Zoom trainings for our campus emergency response plan. And a response plan includes everything from a fire, uh, a power outage, utilities, um, active shooter, uh, you know, the hurricane, a tsunami, um, you know, any number of any number of events that can happen. So I'll I'll have a training, campus emergency response plan training. Um, I need to make sure everybody's familiar with it. Where is it located? How do, I, how do you access it? Who do you call? What do you do? Um, so I, I hope to probably have a training within the next um, month. Um, I don't know when the audit's gonna come, but when the auditors come, they're gonna pick up a phone and they're gonna call you and they're gonna say, do you know where your emergency response plan is? Or, um, are you a CSA and do you know what to do if a student comes to you? So that's why these trainings are really important. Um, and we, we want to stay in compliance. But not only that, is we want to, it takes a village. We, we want to be helpful and we want to support each other. We want to support you. Um, and most certainly, we want to support our community and our students. Um, and we want to create a safe environment for all of us in these, in these days. Um, there's a lot of emotions going on in regards to um, there's fear, there's anxiety, you know, there's money situations. Um, so, so campus security is here for you. Title IX is here for you. Uh, utilize us for a service. And that's all we have for today. Well, Angela, wait, I had a direct chat um, indicating sure. that it, the form wasn't fillable on a Mac computer. Mm. So, so what we can do is double check on that for you folks and then okay. and then send out the forms. Sounds good. Thank you for letting us know. Sorry, um, this is Deanna. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to put out fires for this evening's event, but um, you said the form was sent via Maui announcements. Was it the same email that you sent asking us to sign up for this or? The friendly, re it says friendly reminder to sign up for today at 1 p.m. Oh, okay, yeah, I saw that, okay. And that one, and that one I have the, the three things, um, the other item that we also created for you as a reference is um, a uh, CSA basics. So so we have, we, there's one more, um, what you call, here, let me show you. There's one more, um, here. So we have, we created this for you folks. So so you could print this, keep it somewhere um, close, somewhere near. It basically just touches upon some of the basics of, of what we covered today and with some of the, some of the important phone numbers. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. Have a good week and uh, day off on Friday for some of us.